yourself for invasion. This is Indie Invasion. Consequences. Though hundreds of thousands died in the hours after the arrival of the rent in the sky, millions more souls were lost over the following months. Plague and famine came swiftly on the heels of the cataclysm. Crops and fishing fleets were entirely wiped out, and such food stores that remained were ravaged by vermin or rotted in untended storehouses. Livestock became bloated corpses beneath the permanent cloud cover, and even the scavengers that would have fed on them lay dead. Corpses choked the new coastlines and estuaries, bringing further disease and swarms of carrion eaters. There was barely a vessel that could put to sea, and the waters still threatened to swallow any ship that set forth from less devastated climes. Clutches of survivors that fled the disaster brought with them fresh pestilence. There was no sanctuary for refugees, met with hails of stones at the gates of every town, driven with pitchfork and brand from the few villages that now clung to existence at higher altitudes. The dead outnumbered the living, and only the flies and vultures prospered. The waves, both literal and metaphorical, were felt across the world. Its southern realms ravaged, Europe reeled, crippled by the storms that continued to lash its southern shores. Its most bountiful farmlands turned to ash-caked wastelands and vital fisheries were devoured by the seas that had once provided such bounty. The sky had a sheen like molten bronze, painful to look upon. The rent left an afterimage wherever one gazed, a fleeting impression of pain and emptiness that gnawed at the senses. Against the backdrop of the ongoing storms, it seemed like a lightning bolt that would not fade an invisible yet unmistakable sensation of power. Even when the seas had approached something of their normal calm, they were prone to sudden shifts and currents that bewitched even the most capable pilots and masters. Reefs and shoals that had not existed only months earlier now threatened the busiest trade routes. Island ports and mainland harbors had been turned to broken wharfs and rubble-choked docks. While out in the waters, ship-consuming waterspouts roamed the waves with the power to shatter hulls and throw down masts. Vortices like the Whirlpool or Charybdis could spring up from nowhere, swallowing entire ships. It was not just the lands and seas that had been irrevocably altered by the disastrous arrival of the rent in the sky. Aside from its own malign presence, the cosmic phenomenon wrought other changes upon humanity's view of the heavens. Most prominently, the night was no longer dark. Even after the sun had long set, a pale haze lit the firmament. A constant twilight that induced insomnia and leached at the spirit. As do the near endless summer days tax the well-being of those that dwell near the poles. Beneath the all-seeing gaze of the rent in the sky, one felt constantly exposed, even sensing its unblinking stare when underground in the deepest cavern. Astronomers and astrologers alike agreed that the skies had changed like an aurora, the light of the rent wavered against the heavens, sometimes obscuring the brightest stars, other times appearing to reveal new ones. Fleeting glimpses of heavenly bodies not sighted before now cut across telescopes of those that pried into the cosmos. The rent 
acting like a filter through which a twisted reality was viewable. What one person saw through the rent on any single night would be different the next, or even to another person. And natural philosophers argued amongst themselves to name these new constellations and update their horoscopes according to a new, ever-changing celestial map. It seemed through the miasma of the rent's pollution that even the moon itself looked different. While some have always fancied to see faces or patterns on its surface, now it appeared clear to many that it took on a semblance more of a cracked skull. Or if one paid heed to the account of the madmen that wailed in the cells of the Ospedale San Servolo, perhaps a leering demon mask. Present yet barely perceptible, the rent ebbs and flows like a river. Sometimes half seen, sometimes no more than sensed like a gaze on the back of one's head. At all times it is there though, peering down on the world, its focus dwelling on Venice. It was not only geographic and political upheaval that came in the wake of the rent in the sky. Raw magic flowed into the world, touching everything it fell upon. Those born with an affinity, known or not, started to see the effect immediately. A fortunate few afflicted with terrible illness were miraculously cured, while some in grand health were laid low by sudden debilitating malaise. Preachers and witch doctors, yogi and monks the world over felt the touch of spirit upon them, giving form to their prayers, shaped by faith and ritual. A handful of people started to display remarkable powers of flight, strength, to conjure matter from nothing, or influence the thoughts of others. They were quickly dubbed the gifted, though to what remained of the church they are the devil's abominations, and to themselves they might well consider their changes a curse. Stories of more gifted soon spread and others surely hid rather than flaunt their powers. Through all of this, Venice stood all but unscathed. Sighted as it was on the very northern extent of the rent in the sky that tore Italy apart. Generations that have lived and died amidst floods and turmoil weren't daunted by the relatively small perturbations that befell their city. With the remnants of its fleet rotting in dock, Venice had fallen so low it had possessed little to lose, yet was now poised to ascend once again to preeminence. Thanks, guys, for listening to today's tales. You can find our Indie Invasion podcast on all podcast platforms, including Podbean, Google, and iTunes. And please visit us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. And if you can, support us on Patreon slash Indie Invasion. And feel free to email us with any questions or comments at IndieInvasion at gmail.com. And remember, guys, don't forget to prepare yourself for the invasion. <laughs>